All right, so here's the problem statement. The rectangular area shown in part A of the figure is split into three equal areas, which are then arranged as shown in part B of the figure. Determine the percentage of increase in the second moment of area in part B about the x-axis. Use H equals 200 millimeters and B equals 60 millimeters. All right, so in this video, we are going to uh, primarily focus on the uh, parallel axis theorem. So in this example, we want to find what is the percentage of increase of the second moment of area of this shape. This shape is labeled as uh, part B, and then this shape is part A, which is uh, an arrangement of these shapes. So they're the same shapes, but uh, they're arranged in a different fashion. And we can kind of already tell that the second moment of area of part B is going to be uh, different than part A. In fact, it's actually going to be greater as we will see here. So in this video, we just want to look at the uh, second moment of area about the x-axis. And the x-axis is actually labeled here for both of these figures. So let's go ahead and find the second moment of areas for both of these parts, and then we can compare which one is actually greater and by how much percent. So I'm gonna go ahead, um, let's go ahead and write our solution here. So I'm gonna say the second moment of area for part A, I'm gonna denote this as I sub X A. So that's gonna denote that this is for part A up here. So, uh, well, let's go ahead and first label what our distances are, and they give us H equals 200, so 200 millimeters. I'll just write 200 for now. And then B is 60 millimeters. Now remember for a rectangle, and for the x-axis in the center of the rectangle, the equation of um, the second moment of area is bh cubed over 12 as we had figured out in the previous video so let's just go ahead we know all these dimensions so let's just go ahead and plug and chug so our base we know is 60 millimeters our height is uh, 200 and we are using the cube of that so it's going to be 200 cubed all of this is divided by 12. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug this into the calculator. So 200 cubed multiplied by 60 divided by 12. And we should get that this result is 4.0 times 10 to the 7th. And the units are millimeters to the fourth. Now, why is it millimeters to the fourth? Let's just take a quick moment and look at our units here. Well, if you look at our equation right here, BH cubed over 12, we notice that what whatever we're doing in the numerator, we're actually multiplying these dimensions by four, right? So we have millimeters, that's our base. Then we have another dimension, millimeters, but we're cubing that. So that's already to the cube power, and then we're multiplying that by our B. So it's gonna be millimeters to the fourth. So that's our second moment of area about the x-axis for our first shape right here. Now comes the second moment of area for the second shape that we have configured over here, which is arranged in an I-beam fashion. If, if you think about it, it looks like an I-beam. So this is actually going to be a little bit more involved because this shape is not only just one singular rectangle as we have here. It's actually comprised of three different rectangles in a different fashion forming an I-beam. So we're gonna have to make the statement that um, if we divide these three shapes like this, and they actually labeled um, 
the numbers of the shapes. So we have one labeled here, we have two labeled here, and then three to denote that these are three different shapes that we can uh, find the second moment of area of. So the second moment of area of this entire shape for part B uh, is going to be this. It's going to be the second moment of area of one plus the second moment of area of two plus the second moment of area of three about this axis. Now that's, now that's a key thing to understand is about this axis. So we're, we're going to see in a minute what, why I am pointing that out. So I'm going to say I1 plus I2 plus I3. All right. So this is going to be a little bit more involved than part A. So now let's take a look. When we look at finding the second moment of area and it's a little bit of a composite shape, um, it's always good to identify any similar properties of shapes. Now in this case, do we have any similar properties? Well, we do. Due to symmetry, because of our axis right here, because it cuts through the middle of this bar, and because one and three are the same shape and size and the same dimensions and they are the same distance away from this axis that's also important to understand then we can go ahead and safely make the statement that i1 is equal to i3 and this is only true because they have the same properties because of symmetry of the axis and because they have the same dimensions and they are arranged in the same format away from this axis. Only then can we make that statement. So I'm going to leave this here for now, that I1 is equal to I3. So what is I1? I1, let's go ahead and find I1 first. I1 is actually going to involve using the parallel axis theorem and the parallel axis theorem is this you take the second moment of area of this shape about the center about this axis and we'll call it x naught okay so we'll find the second moment of area about x naught i'll write that right here but we want to find what is the second moment of area ultimately about this axis that they want us to find in this problem? So to do that, we need to multiply or add, sorry, we need to add the area of that shape multiplied by the distance squared. And the distance is the distance between the axis that we've done for this shape to the axis of our desired uh, our desired axis of second moment of areas. So that's this distance right here, B. So let's go ahead and use this formula to solve for I1. So I1, so about the X uh, axis or the X naught axis, we have bh cubed, right? So what is b in this case? Well, b is actually going to be this length right here. And our length is 200, right? That's from rearranging these configurations right here. So b in this case is actually 200. And what is our height of this shape? Well, our height, if we take a look here, this is our, these are our three shapes, right? They're divided into three equal sections. And this length is 60. So one third of 60 is 20. So this length or the height is going to actually be 20, not 60. And we're cubing that. And it's divided by 12, right? According to our formula of uh, the x-axis of this shape right here. All right. Plus, now we need the area of the shape times the distance of the axis squared. So the area of the shape 
is, well, it's BH, right? So B times H, 200 times 20. So 200 times 20 multiplied by our distance of the axes squared. So now let's find the distance. So the distance from this axis to this axis. Well, what's the distance from the center here all the way to this point? It should just be half of this height, right? Should be 100. So D equals 100, but that's not all, right? Because we have this distance to account for here from, from the edge of this block to the center of this rectangle. What is that distance? Well, it's half of this height, right? And this height is 20 millimeters. So half of that is 10. So it's going to be 100 plus 10. So it should be 110 squared. 110 squared. All right. So let's go ahead, plug this into the calculator. So 200 times 20 cubed is about 16 to the fifth power divided by 12 plus uh, 110 squared times 20 times 200. That should give us a grand of I can find my mouse here. This should give us, and uh, you can go ahead and put this in scientific notation if you want. I'm just gonna go ahead and write out the full number. So it's four, eight, five, three, 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 five threes, point three three. Yeah, so in this case, it would probably be better if you wrote this in scientific notation, but I like to keep out the full number so that way I'm not making any rounding errors or anything like that. So this is going to be that number, the millimeters fourth, that's the unit. And this is, remember, this is I1. And remember, we also made the statement that I1 is equal to I3. So I'll also write here on the right that this is also equal to I3. Okay, so now we found I1 and I3. Now if I3 had a different property, let's say the, the length or the height, or sorry, yeah, the length is actually cut in half or something, or it's cut in three quarters like this, then we would have to find I3 separately because then I1 would not equal I3. But because they are the same, we don't have to make the extra step to find I3. So now let's find I2. Now I2 is actually just going to be, I'll, I'll write I2 actually right on the left side right here. I2 is actually just going to be BH cubed of this shape because the x-axis is right smack in the center of this shape. So all we need to do is find BH cubed. So B in this case is 20, right? Into three equal sections of 60, it's the length is 20 and the height is 200. And we're cubing that divided by 12. And so this should turn out to be, uh, let's actually put this in scientific notation. So this number, if I plug this into the calculator, it's going to be 20 times 200 to the third divided by 12. And it's going to be, uh, how many decimal places would that be? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so it's going to be 1.33. I'm rounding this one actually. To the set 10 to the seventh millimeters fourth now i'm rounding it here but i'm not going to round it in my calculator i'm going to keep the full value stored in the calculator so it's good to uh 
not round everything that you have um because it's it's definitely going to change you're going to get a rounding error in your answer so i'm going to keep everything in its exact form you can store the number in your calculator so that way you don't have to type out the full number now let's go ahead now that we know i1 i2 and i3 let's go ahead and find uh ixb so ixb is going to be i1 plus i2 plus i3 and so i1 remember we said is this number right here now i'm not going to write out the full number i'm just going to say it's i'm going to draw an arrow right here so that plus i2 which is this guy right here which is one to the fourth or 1.33 times 10 to the seventh millimeters fourth this is i2 so I'm going to draw another arrow right here, plus I3, which is the same as I1. So I'll drag another arrow down here. So this is what we're going to be adding. And the sum of that should be, so let's see. So that plus the second one plus this guy. should be this number and i'll write out the full number so it's 1104 and we have five zeros following that one two three four five millimeters to the fourth Oops, that's meters to the fourth. That's millimeters to the fourth. All right. So now that we have found IXB and IXA, now we're not done. Remember, they want us to compare the second moment of areas about the x-axis so now that we found them about the x-axis ixa and ixb now we need to find the percentage of increase of b to a so the percentage increase i'll write it down here percentage increase is going to be well because b we can tell that b is actually bigger than a right so the percentage increase is going to be ixb because b is the bigger area minus the smaller one ixa divided by well how much did we increase from the original right so from the original we increased this is how much we're going to find out because out of the first area the original one how much did we uh, actually increase so it's going to be the second one minus four times ten to the seventh right that's the second moment of area of the first one divided by four times ten to the seventh And that's 1.76, but we want the percentage of that. So we multiply that by 100, move the decimal to the right two times. So it's actually going to be an increase of 176%, right? We multiply by 100 because that is our ratio, right? This is our ratio but we want the percentage as well. So the percentage is, you just multiply it by 100. Move the decimal over two places. So that's the answer right here. 176 percentage increase of this second moment of area compared to this second moment of area. All right, thank you for watching.